Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, Kristen. How's everyone doing today? Fantastic. Good. I'm Kristen McGargal. I'm with Liquidware, and we are, you've joined our webinar, um, which is VMware and Citrix acquisitions. How does it impact you? The first 15 minutes is more or less our sound check um, and introductions, and then we will get started at 11.15 a.m. Central today. That's right. There's already a, quite a few people already on. So the nature of the Liquid Wear Unplugged series is to get to know us a little bit personally as well as we'll talk about the topic. So we'll, we'll start talking about that topic shortly <clears throat> and see where everyone is coming to us from today. Karen, where, where are you coming to us from today? I am currently in Waltham, Massachusetts, so about eh, 10 or so miles outside of Boston on a rainy, oh. rainy day. Oh. Just off the turnpike. Uh, no, we're Waltham's big. So we're it's actually closer. closer to the Belmont border. So oh. a little ways off of 128, really. And Patrick, uh, country music uh, hall. Yeah, thing. I'm out. Exactly. I'm out in here in Hillbilly land outside of uh, you know, Nashville, Tennessee with my with my killer internet that uh, is counted in the kilobytes still uh, to this day. So it keeps it exciting. Uh, so, so Patrick, two things. One is your the, the fuzziness on your screen tells us your internet story all by itself. But <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to, you you told me the story like about a week and a half ago of your ongoing two year uh, saga to get fiber in your house. Yeah. Um, that might be a good use of the sound check to to explain that a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's been three years, uh, three years and uh, four months, and but. Magically, when I came back from Explore, I drove down the road and I could see some fiber being ran. And uh, then I drove by and talked to the guys. And so I have 600 feet of fiber at my pole at the road that has to still be trenched and terminated and ended on my side. Um, so maybe before the end of the year, before you know this contract is four years old and has to go to day, day, daycare every day, um, it, I might have real internet, you know, in, in the megabits. So that would be awesome. I could I, have the I gigabits think, one day, but I, I'll just do megabits is good enough. I think some cocktails and a night working party, and we could have that fiber knocked out no time flat. Like, I'm <laughs> oh, sure some I, 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 I went and burned on sweet tea we'll happy uh, and made sure that they were happy. Uh, all the people <laughs> that were working on that poll, I was like, once I saw them, I went and did a loop and got some Arnold Palmer and some sweet tea at the gas station and a couple little treats and brought it back to them. It's like, Hey, I, I mean, how long y'all got? Oh yeah, we'll finish this today. And sure enough, like the next, that even that late that night, like six o'clock that night, it was all wound up at the bottom of the pole. So it's a very interesting process how it's called ADSS. And that's where they run a stainless steel cable along the poles and then they pull the fiber across that because the fiber can't hold its own weight. And then they have a little machine, a little cocoon that goes on it that wraps it with stainless steel cable all the way down. So now the fiber is actually held onto that stainless steel cable. And so they have a four wheeler that they were using to pull the cable through this big gully. Uh, so it was, it, was a, it was a cool process to watch for sure. So I'm, I'm happy, but uh, you know, it's not done yet. And I don't yeah. have a timeline of when it's going to be done. So if it gets done before Christmas, that'll be a good Christmas present. Yeah, they, they pulled fiber down the main road. I live yeah. only three driveways within the community I live in. And they pulled fiber down the main road. Google came down first and then Verizon did. Verizon's fiber teams a couple of years ago were named, were still named MCI or something like that. Yep. For, Go, you know, held back to that. So the trucks literally said MCI. I was like, what the heck does that mean? I had to look into this, it. Was, this was a no name truck because it was all contracted. Yeah. So they all contract, yeah, and subcontract. Identity, right. So it was all contracted out. Um, but I don't think but, they're going to uh, run it internally. Because I was like, those are my poles. Right. <laughs> I'm sure good. it's real. It's not just random people lying fiber down. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't think I, they're going to terminate it. But, yeah, so I exactly. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's 46 poles that they had to run stuff to my house. So, I mean, I've, I've been paying mm -hmm. attention and counting and using Google Earth and figuring it all out. I was hoping we'd get the option, but they're only running it into the new neighborhoods. You have to get like yeah, it, it's all about 70% of the people that's in the that's on that. Mm -hmm. yep. 
So and years Robert, ago, I ran the Ragnar Relay. I wonder if we were in by your house. There was a Ragnar Relay that goes from Chattanooga to Nashville. And we were in the middle of some pretty dark areas and ran past your house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is a distinct possibility. How how many segments, how long was your segment of the relay then? Mine were pretty short. I got lucky. I didn't have the hard segments. They were like maybe four miles a piece. But one of them was okay. in the middle of the night. As the... Wow. That's neat. Robert, you're coming to us from the Carolinas or? Well, I, I live in Nevada, but uh, yeah. The, the, That's the right. Carolinas. Yep. I don't have any cool fiber stories, though. Sorry. <laughs> but this week you're on the East Coast. You, you, already, you already have normal internet in the 20th century, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why don't why don't you get that? Um, what's the uh, the Elon Musk stuff? Is it Elon Musk that has the the satellite internet? Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. So Starlink. Yeah. So I've got a couple friends that use it, and the biggest problem is what we're doing right now. And so it'll have awesome download speeds like all the time, but uploads and the packet loss and latency just randomly spike to infinite where it's a couple seconds. So web meetings are like its arch enemy. Streaming Netflix, playing, you know, Fortnite, yeah, it works good. As soon as you start uploading and downloading at the same time, it, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. So a couple of my friends have it and it, it just wasn't worth that money. So it's like yeah. running teams on VDI. Yeah, yeah, without the optimization pack, right? Uh, where sometimes it can be perfectly fine, and then other times it's just completely terrible. So my DSL with my two squirrel friends on there with the two wires running down the road does a little bit better job more consistently than uh, LTE satellite using like HughesNet or Starlink. So it's just a little more consistent especially when it storms and we get storms all the time. It's great. We got a lot of people joining us and they're wondering what we're talking about at this point, probably because we've doubled the audience since yeah, I was yeah, looking yeah. at it. And this is Liquidware Unplugged. Said that's right. We'll chat for a few more minutes and then we'll get started. And that's the nature of Liquidware Unplugged. If you look at the webinar you signed up for, it started officially at 15 minutes after the hour, but we let you see some of the sound checks and dress rehearsal and and uh, as we ease into it, we'll we'll get started again in a moment. I'm coming I'm coming to us from just north of Atlanta, in the Alpharetta area. So um, the weather here is nice. It turned a little cooler this morning. Had to get out. Actually, you know, I was sitting in San Francisco at VMware Explorer, and I'd carried a jacket out there. So that same bag is not fully unpacked yet. Yeah, I got all my dirty clothes out, but um, that's that's kind I of a long grab, time. Grab my jacket from there, right? And so the last place I was wearing it was a cool evening in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago at VMware Explorer. But it's 71 yeah, it, degrees here now. Fall is easing easing into itself. Yeah, my son ran out the door today with his cross country stuff on and was like, "Whoa, it's cold." I was like, "Yep, yeah, all through, brother." <laughs> we had that yesterday. It was like 65 here. I'm north of Chicago. Uh, but today it's going to yep. get back up to 80, so enjoy it while you can. Oh, y'all are going back to summer repeat, apparently. We are, we are. It's going to be hot this week. Which is good, Karen I'll take probably it. probably got some great weather up there, right? I mean, it's probably nice 60s, 50s, all that. We're about 70, I think, right now. Like I said, a little rainy. Oh, okay. Sadly not top-down weather. That's great. Well, um, we we would have, uh, if this was smell vision we would have pumped out a little pumpkin spice because uh, that seems to be what's happening in our household. Every, every time I go uh, upstairs on break or something, there's Just another item sitting out. Too early. I had my first one yesterday. Yep. Oh, I did. I went for it. It was good. I'm not. I'm not ready to commit to fall just yet. I got. I got until the end of September before I commit to fall. Hanging on. It's true. <laughs> September is still summer. And we already got our Halloween costume. We're good now. Ooh. What are you going to be for Halloween? Uh, my daughter is doing like a Beetlejuice uh, throwback thing. And then my son is being a zombie apocalypse like biohazard dude. So he's 
so he's got like an axe and a biohazard suit. So, you know, sounds just fitting. How it is. Yep. Yep. So, Karen, since you did a co-op at NASA, is this? Can we now say that we're like talking to a, ro a rocket scientist? I, I'm in fact a rocket scientist. That's that's what my okay. degrees are. There you go. I, I yes. took a class called rocket propulsion back in the day. <laughs> Great. Thanks, uh -huh. Jason. Thanks for like bringing this yep. all along with talk to a rocket scientist. Yep. <laughs> Everyone can add this to the resume builder now. We are ready yep. to go. That's funny. Everyone. I used to Karen. have a little pin that said, "Why, yes, I am a rocket scientist," but I stopped wearing that around. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> means does that mean that Big Bang Theory is like your favorite show then? You know, I've only seen it a few times to be honest. I don't watch a lot of TV oh, okay. in general, so. Yeah. Well, my kids are like, "What's TV?" Now, yeah. I wonder what the future of TV is. That could be a whole another liquid right. wear unplugged if we could It'll get it. Be this, yeah. It's the same thing as what's a TV, what's a computer, right? It's mm -hmm. just this device, and I'm watching a show. Like, what is TV? You know, yeah, right. I'm with you. I cleaned out my basement and found some old floppy disks. Oh, like, <laughs> floppies that are floppy or floppies that aren't floppy? I had one, mm, good point. one actual floppy. The five, what was they, five and a half? Uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, those are the good days. No uh, way of knowing what's on it anymore because there's nothing, no way to read it. But when I was in college, that was you know you could always find one or two in my backpack, especially like you know the high density had just come out, I think, or it would mm -hmm. become more affordable. Yeah, I think it might have been my yeah, thesis that my, was on that actually. Yeah, right beside Albert Einstein, right there is five and a quarter for BSD from IBM that used to be that used to do so like there's a whole case of them the whole operating system is in on i think it's eight five and a quarters so it's a hoot uh, wow five and a quarter i was close with my five and a half yeah or five and a half I, yeah i think it is five yeah, and no half. five and a quarter sounds right I, five and a half yeah, didn't five. sound right it's because then the other three and a half for sure ah yeah so then it's definitely five and a quarter then well, Kristen and I were having a hard time locating a USB thumb drive the other day, and I got to think, and how, how extinct those are starting to be, just yeah. because we all have wireless now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Right. Well, and then, and then it's become such a faux pas, like in the corporate world, to plug in random USB things into your device. That's true. And it's like, mm -hmm. it seems like that down. market has been hurt by that security standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's right. Well, um, we just came off the hills of VMware Explore, and uh, that was a good show. Not not really the topic. We might talk about it a little more as we get started at, at, at 15 minutes after the hour, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and, and you're still seeing a little bit of the unplugged nature. Uh, I had heard when we were out at um, VMware Explore, just from some of our peers, and Patrick, Robert, we may have been talking about this too. It looked like Citrix might be ready to do Citrix Summit, but I actually confirmed yesterday that there's not going to be really a full Citrix Summit going on. There's field kickoff is going on at the Swan and Dolphin, and and uh, they're opening it up for partners and alliance partners like us to come and attend, but there's not going to be an exhibition planned. Yeah. At least that's what my yeah, Citrix Ready I, contact said. I saw that too because I was excited to go to the Swan and Dolphin because the last summit was there. And I always mm -hmm. like that venue because then we you can run around and do Disney things or whatever. And especially with all the Star Wars stuff there, I was going to be all about it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the first Thinergy was there. I was there, dating myself. 1998 yeah. Thinergy. They, uh, I've told this story many times, and the audience may have even heard it. But they came around to each individual booth when we were exhibiting, and we were. We were showing modem sharing and fax server software. That dates me further for Citrix. And um, they said, well, we're putting the lunch bags out on the center tables right now, but we're asking you, the vendors, not to not to get one yet. We'll see if any are left over. That was the first That was the first oh, energy. Wow. <laughs> that was fun. And Ed Yakabuchi from Citrix still there. Yeah. Oh, Ed. That's All right. So it's 15 minutes after the hour. Uh, Kristen McGarkill from marketing has helped set up a, a, and tee us up for a great liquidware unplugged session today. And the topic at hand is VMware and Citrix acquisitions are setting up to be finalized to take place. And how is this going to affect you? And, and, and in that way, we mean the community. Uh, how is it going to affect your business? How is it going to affect uh, 
your enterprise for delivering workspaces? How is it going to affect your job? Uh, and if you're a Citrite or you work for VMware, you know, how is it going to affect or how maybe it's already affected you? Um, so it has a big impact on the industry. And we've got an all-star panel uh, in front of us today. And I'm going to um, let each person introduce themselves. And I'm going to start with how I'm seeing everyone in my screen and going around. And I believe it's in the order we joined the webinar today. Karen Gondoli from LeoStream. Could you please do us the favor of, of telling us who you are and just a little about LeoStream? Sure thing. Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you, Jason, for having me. My name is Karen Gondoli. I'm the CEO and VP of Product Management at LeoStream. And what LeoStream does is we provide a remote access and desktop connection management platform with the whole idea being allowing people to build solutions out of the best of breed components for the rest of the BDI stack. So whatever hosting platform, multi-cloud, whatever display protocol, whatever thing client, doesn't matter to us, build what you need, we'll manage it from a single pane of glass. That's a little about me and the company. Thanks, Karen. And then Patrick, Patrick Cobble, you're next. Yep, uh, so I'm Patrick, I'm a security nerd at VDI Sec. Uh, so we do VDI security, so we break into people's VDI deployments and then tell them how to fix it. And so audits all day long, all day strong. And then uh, I do a lot of speaking, flying out to Houston tomorrow for a Citrix user group, and then just got back from Phoenix last week for a VMware user con. So in with Citrix stuff and VMware stuff all the time. This your second webinar today? It is, yeah, because I had to record one. Yeah, so I've got to upload it. So I've got to, you know, with my hillbilly internet, I've got to go drive to M McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts or the Flying J to get it done. I remember when, when we first met just now several years ago, and I don't remember which synergy it was, but as I, I had, we had met just a week or two previous, and then I'm walking through the floor and I see Patrick's uh, screen up on, uh, his face up on the screen, the big screen of that oh, Citrix, yeah. I think of Citrix Synergy. Yep, a little bit of Synergy, yep. Yep, and I was like, I didn't know I was speaking to a star. Well mm -hmm. known in the industry, Patrick, and we appreciate you joining us today. Oh, thank you. We have Robert Morris with us today as well, previously uh, the customer experience CTO over at Citrix and uh, and also over the office of the CTO as far as uh, helping manage and herd the cats, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But. <laughs> no, uh, it's fine. Uh, so, so yeah, just I, uh, I probably know almost every attendee that's on here, um, <laughs> just having been around for so long. So uh, uh, former CTP, former V expert, former Microsoft trainer, Citrix trainer, VMware trainer, uh, uh, compact high availability and clustering going that far back. Uh, so very strong technical background over the years. Uh, I was a CEO of an, and founder at Advantic Global Services, a uh, professional services organization um, in uh, numerous countries and states around the United States. Uh, and um, retired from that uh, just over five years ago and then a uh, little time passed and then Citrix asked me to, to join and uh, came in running uh, the global head of customer experience partnerships for a while. Then uh, the office of the CTO uh, was given to me to become the customer experience CTO. I kept the partnerships piece and then I added the, uh, the insights and advisory, which is the voice of the customer. So we were overall customer experience and office of the CTO was one piece of that. So um, kind of had our hands in multiple different directions, talking to different folks, uh, and how to how to make Citrix products better and drive strategy. Yep, you you offer us an interesting perspective today, from the, all the way from the partner and integrator perspective, all the way up, and we we appreciate you joining us today. And um, as for as for myself, I'm over Alliances and product marketing over here at Liquidware. I've been with the company since the first year we got started, which was 2009. I came to the company through, if you're familiar with our suite um, of workspace. Uh, management and transformation solutions. It, I came to the uh, company with the Profile Unity acquisition, where I was offered a great job and a little stake in the in the company going forward. And I was excited to to do that. It's been a fun ride. We've been around now for I think uh, this is our twelfth year, about to be thirteen. I don't. I've lost count right now. I'd have to do the math real quick. But um, it's uh, exciting to be here in the presence of all of you. And um, Speaking about the topic at hand, VMware and Citrix acquisitions are pending, and uh, we've, we've heard that the, the Citrix one could actually close 
sooner than some of us had anticipated, maybe even the end of this month. Mm -hmm. um, TIBCO, Citrix being rolled together by uh, Vista Partners as well as Elliott and uh, financing provided by a, a wide breadth of, I understand, of the financial community to be able to finance taking that company private. So, um, and then VMware being acquired by Broadcom. Broadcom's been around and a lot of people think about them as being a, a hardware and chip manufacturer, but they've actually made a lot of acquisitions over the years of well-known companies such as Symantec and CA. And as far as we've all read, we, we have seen that uh, the new division of their software, so everything would be folded in, it looks like, into a division to be called VMware. So the VMware that we have known as a community is set to be even broader. Uh, and what does that mean? We can talk about that too as well. Uh, and I think that that might be one of the first topics that we we speak about, and I'll revisit that in a second. But Kristen, we've got a poll set up for our audience. We can start by asking one of those first poll questions uh, and put that on the screen if you can. Have the acquisition plans of Citrix or VMware already had an effect on your business or IT planning? And so we're asking you to, to vote. And once you vote, we're going to revisit this a little bit later. We're going to have a few other similar uh, formatted questions come up. But this will help show what your peers are thinking in, in the industry. Yeah. I like how Kristen put on there that we shouldn't vote. <laughs> I tried to. Did you? I'm like, click, click, click. So, <laughs> so next, next time I'll have to join from another another PC so I can do that. Yeah, but we've got 63% yeah, have voted so far. So please get your votes in. Do, do, do. Yeah, if you're on a mobile device, I know it's kind of like a weird thing how you have to click around to do it. So this will remain open for just a minute. So uh, just uh, you've got a 50-50 chance of being right or wrong here. No, there's no wrong answer, obviously, in here. But let's go ahead and propose the first question to the panel. <clears throat> do you believe that, and, and your, your, your answer can be two-part, is this going to make um, workspaces a more focused thing for the new Citrix? Uh, and how focused separately do you think uh, workspaces will be as a focus of the Broadcom acquisition? So as we think about that for a minute, um, I'm going to call on Robert first, see what your thoughts are there. Are, is, it, is it going to be a new focus Citrix going forward as far as the EUC part goes? You can answer, feel free to answer the same thing for uh, for VMware. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I, it's so again, to be clear, I only want to talk about stuff that's public. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, Citrix has, has made a commitment with, uh, you know, a number of the hyperscalers and so forth to, to really move forward in the DAS space, uh, you know, desktop as a service. And, um, you know, Citrix is, is really kind of the, the, the brand name in EUC. So, you know, going all the way back to when it was a, you know, you, you mentioned Synergy in, in, you know, early days, it was, you know, just a remote access and how do you get into your network solution originally um, and run, you know, OS2 based apps actually, and then it became NT and, and Windows apps. But, but the idea is that you know, Citrix ha is synonymous with EUC. So is it gonna be a new focus for Citrix? Um, maybe not so much as a refocus of uh, some of the core competencies, you know, and that's been made public that that really uh, Citrix has, has said, hey, we're, we are already the leader in uh, EUC, and so we're going to double down on the DAS side of things. So to say, you know, if you want to go to a hyperscale or if you want to go to the cloud and, and run your desktop or EUC space there, Citrix wants to be the preferred solution for that. Um, on the VMware side, I think it becomes more interesting um, because on the VMware side, uh, the, the real interesting twist was, you know, through the whole acquisition, I think most people are probably familiar with this, but kind of, you know, to step back for a second, the, the Broadcom acquisition of VMware uh, supposedly took place with four people in the room. Uh, there was Hawk Tan from Broadcom, 
there was Tom Krause from Broadcom, uh, Michael Dell, and then uh, probably Ragu. I don't, I don't remember who the fourth person is, but but uh, three of the four I know, uh, or I, th I believe I know, based on public information. And um, so Tom Krause was one of those, and he was the president of Broadcom. And then suddenly, uh, during the right after the Go Shop period uh, was uh, was finalized, and VMware said, "Okay, nope, we couldn't find a better buyer. We're going to Broadcom." Tom Krause announced that he was going to go to Citrix as the new CEO. Um, just prior to that, though, there's an interesting interview that Tom had done. Um, and he was asked, and I think this was in CRN. Uh, you can probably Google around and find it. But Tom was asked, what are you going to, what about innovation with VMware moving forward? What are you going to do? Where are you going to make your investments? And uh, he listed the key areas and did not list EUC. That was, that was not in there. Uh, so it'd be really interesting to see now that he's shifted over to go to the Citrix side of things where EUC is the core of what they do, um, how VMware evolves through all this. Right, it, 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 interesting perspective. And, and Patrick, they, I think you may have some information on this as well. Uh, it, speaking about how what the focus is and how many times EUC has been been mentioned? Because the EUC community has, we've noticed, right? We, mm -hmm. You know, we, we know that uh, what's been reported from VMware is 15 to 20 percent, and I think I'm rounding up there of their business is EUC. So mm -hmm. we lean forward and say, well, how much how much is the EUC business going to be focused on? And there's that concern over at Citrix too. Is Tibco going to distract from the core Citrix market? The new the new company is going to we understand is going to be named Citrix, I believe. But is it going to distract from the core workspace offerings? Yeah, I mean, I think overall it's going to, I mean, it's going to, this whole thing, my answer to the previous poll question was definitely yes, and this still relates to it, is that it's already making people go, well, what should I do? Lots of renewals or Q3, Q4 for a lot of customers. So it's like, do I stay here? Do I go there? Um, but yeah, I think the focus is definitely the thing that I'm paying attention to. So like, We'd look at previous VM worlds uh, and then even VM Explorer, the percentage of EUC content is small, right? Uh, compared to the, the larger ESX data center stuff there. Citrix content was pretty much all EUC focused with a little sprinkle of networking and some of their other solutions. So if we look at pre-COVID, what the conference's topics were, and then VMware is the only one that's had one after, right? And so they did have an EUC focus. They had a couple EUC tracks, so it was good. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking and waiting uh, to see what's going to happen because Citrix is definitely the old timer in this space. Um, but since Daz is growing, then that's when I've seen uh, solutions like WorkSpot and LeoStream and other things out there. That And, and of course, AVD, because uh, I think they're really steering the boat on a lot of this stuff. And a lot of people are going from anything to that. And that that's going to make a whole new game for everybody. Karen, you have thoughts and, and, and maybe what some of your customers are thinking or, or what you're hearing on the street? Yeah, and I think I think Patrick kind of hit the nail on the head with that last statement, which is that AVD is something that we're hearing a lot of people pick up. And I think that's going to be the real competitor for Citrix as they move forward and start talking about DAS. We don't hear with in the Leo stream scope, a lot of people asking us about Citrix and, and concerned about the future of Citrix. We hear a lot more on the VMware side because we have customers, I think from Leo stream, since our customers tend to build solutions, not want a stack that they can slide in, what they're building on top of a lot is vSphere. I think mm -hmm. VMware has a, a good market share there and that's a very strong market for them. Mm -hmm. And now people are wondering, well, what do I do with the EUC? I want to continue using my vSphere, but maybe get up out of Horizon. And so that's a lot what we're hearing around. Um, a AVD uh, emerging, and, and, and you, you mentioned it, Patrick mentioned it. We uh, we also hear a good bit about it. And Liquidware, we've been partners, uh, you know, was it was uh, the new generation of RDMI, and then it was WVD, and, and they involved us early on because they liked what we were doing with, especially with FlexApp, attaching applications, and yep. and our entire stack helping transform those desktops. And we have a lot of customers that have really shown interest in AVD. Uh, as far as enterprises go, we've seen um, the, the bigger the company, the, the slower we've seen them to adopt AVD yet. 
Mm -hmm. uh, is this what um, what you're what you're seeing, Patrick, uh, Karen, Robert? Yep. And I think from at least where LeoStream tends to be within an enterprise that's mm -hmm. adopting VDI or DAS or any kind of hosted desktop solution, the types of work flows and the type of work that a, the end user needs to do is going to dictate whether AVD will work out for them or not. Yeah. Because obviously you're not going to put a post-production engineer or somebody trying to use CAD up on an instance of AVD. Yep. We had quite a few enterprises leveraging our Stratosphere solution to, um, to, to help size their AVD environment. Um, and we have had a, a, a few that have flipped that switch and gone. And, and uh, mid-range is what Citrix or VMware would have called those markets of where we've seen some adoption. Um, the the whole thing about AVD is um, they they I think some of the community feels like right now you have to roll up your own solution, which has pluses and minuses. One vendor we've seen get some traction is Nerdio, I'm starting to emerge with their control plan plane because they can justify the and help justify the workloads. Um, Patrick, have you seen Nerdio come up much in in uh, conversations? Yeah. With AVD? Pretty much, it's just a synonym of AVD. So if you have AVD, you have Nerdio in almost every case. So every deployment is because the cost of that Nerdio product, you can pay for usually within just a couple months or a year of the savings you will get on AVD. And that's because AVD as a whole doesn't have some of the power capacity management saving stuff built in. Um, but it also makes me go, well, it's just a couple clicks away and then Microsoft adds a couple of those features, uh, but it's probably not in their best interest to add those features because Azure instances running 24 hours a day makes them more money, right? So if yeah. you purposely make a power capacity management thing in this VDI DAS world, you're literally losing money uh, in Azure. So yeah, I'd see it almost every time, especially the larger the deployment, the more often you see it. Robert, so, uh, Patrick brought up uh, WorkSpot, and I think you've spoken to the people over at WorkSpot a bit uh, in a consultant role. Uh, do you do you have a feeling of where WorkSpot sees the market headed? Yeah, no, I uh, <laughs> um, again only public information on this, but the uh, WorkSpot is um, kind of I think from conversations I've had and 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 kind of out on booth floors and stuff. So kind of public information, but is seeing the the acquisition taking place since January, by the way, it goes all the way back to the typical Citrix announcement was was in January, I believe. Uh, and then May, I think it was for uh, for the VMware Broadcom announcement. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, um, upheaval in the market. And, and, and companies like WorkSpot are looking at that and going, you know, customers are coming to us and this is what they're telling me. They're coming to us and saying, hey, we need to have another solution. Um, that's kind of kind of what I've been hearing talking to, to customers actually since, Jan since the January announcement was made by Citrix and then just got reinforced with the VMware Broadcom announcement yeah. is customers um, aren't saying necessarily, hey, we're gonna go abandon Citrix or we're gonna go abandon VMware, but man, we better have a backup plan. Like if something happens, we, we need to have a strategy uh, and flexibility to, to be able to do something else. I, I was talking to one uh, very senior person in the financial services industry uh, just last week, I think it was, or a week and a half ago, and saying that, you know, some of these other offerings like a workspot wasn't gonna be the primary solution that they had, but they needed to have something besides Citrix and VMware. And so it kind of goes to your, your uh, your question that you had asked on that poll, and kind of, so I'm kind of eager to see the results on that. Uh, I think she has I, the results now, even uh, though I could vote in the results. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think what I think what this has done is, uh, interestingly enough, is it's created an opportunity not just for companies like LeoStream and WorkSpot and so forth to say, hey, we have some multi-cloud and and you know wider design and flexible solutions that you can look at, but it's provided an opportunity for the customers. The customers now have the ability uh, to go to their management and say, hey, look, we need to question this design. Like we've been going with this one manufacturer for all these years. Mm -hmm. Let us look and see what other options there are. And, and by the way, it might be stay on prem. It might be go to the cloud. It might be some combination therein. It might be go to multi-cloud, right? So, but, but it's a good opportunity for everyone right now. Like everyone can stop 
and say, they, and they have justification because of these acquisitions, right? That gives them the, the gunpowder to go into their managers and, and executives and say, we really want to just question what we're doing. We might be going down the right path already, but let's look at that and evaluate that. Uh, and, and, and that's where, by the way, it also opens up opportunities for partners and service providers to, to come in and help with that. You know, again, like my former company, Advantech Global Services, you know, a systems integration company. Uh, and then companies like, you know, Liquidware that says, hey, we can help abstract certain components of that layer and make it so you can go to multiple places. Or LeoString, you know, saying, hey, you want to run different protocols? Uh, you want to have a broker that can get you on different platforms for different reasons? We can help you with that, right? So. Uh, it's it's a good opportunity for people to get out there and take a look. The poll question, uh, Kristen, would you mind coming back in for a moment and showing sure. us uh, the results, restate, and uh, let us know what the results were? Okay, so the question was, have the acquisition plans of Citrix and or VMware already had an effect on your business or IT planning? And the results are 27% said yes, 73% said no. And we had yeah. 75 I would, have thought it was I would have lost money on that. Like I would, I would have lost all my money. Like I would have bet on like it's going to be 100%. I yeah. would have too. Seven? Yeah, yeah, I lost money. We shouldn't uh, even be talking about all this today, I guess. <laughs> well, <laughs> webinar's <laughs> over. <laughs> so, by the way, no, maybe we're like, maybe we're informing them though. You know, we're sometimes we know though is misinformed because they made the decision to attend this webinar based on those right. acquisitions. So That's they right. have already made changes to what they're doing. Right. <laughs> that was the change they made, yeah, a positive yeah. one to find out more. No, so so you know, in fairness, we're closer to this news sometimes than uh, the community is. So you know, they they let's let's find out what this is about. So um, so they they tuned in to see what it was about, and I think we've done a pretty good job uh, restating what the current plans are as far as we know them, and uh, we're not not we're not maligning Citrix or VMware. We're talking about the reality is. Uh, that, that people need to be very well informed so they can make informed decisions going forward if there are changes. Because we're talking about business continuity here. One of the most important things that you can do to keep your end users productive when almost everyone in your organization has a workspace, a, a Windows workspace, a lot of times those happen to be, is provide that business continuity. This is keeping your users productive. And if you're if you no longer feel like you're with a leader in the industry, or you think that leader has shifted, uh, or you want to be uh, have the assurance that you can make those those shifts and changes at a whim, uh, you need to stay well informed. And um, so now's a good time for that second poll question, I believe, Kristen, if if we want to put the second poll question up. Have the acquisition plans of Citrix or VMware already had an effect on your career or job or someone that you know? And now this is, you know, it, and had an effect means it may mean have you brushed up your resume <laughs> because of it. It may not mean that you have uh, lost your position or that you're changing your position. But yeah. uh, select one, and we'll revisit this one in in a in a bit. We'll leave the poll question up to give you plenty of time. But um, I do want to say this, and uh, as far as as far as I go and many members of this panel, we're well connected. So um, also feel free to reach out to one of us if this has affected you in a negative way. Uh, and we'd love to network with you and uh, help you find your next steps if it has affected it. Don't want to be insensitive there. Where there's, if there's anything I can do for anyone there in the audience or any of the attendees, let us know how we can help. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I know that there's been organizational restructures at Citrix and VMware that have let people go and then also just people moving careers. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to tell some of the people that especially moved careers and went from one company to the other, uh, even some of the high level ones, it's like, did, did some of the purchase or uncertainty of either one of these purchases make them go yes, or the restructures happen because of those purchases and the uncertainty of how it's all going to shake out, you know? So I, I think, yeah, I definitely know some people that have been affected to it. Um, but at what level too? Yeah. And, and the only thing that the community has is, you know, we, we, is to judge how these previous deals have taken place. So we know that a lot of times it, it does cause uh, right sizing of these companies and, and sometimes job shifting or job loss or something to another division. 
there was a story out yesterday morning uh, that the, they believe that TIBCO and Citrix together will uh, call about 1,000 jobs, right, mm -hmm. just, just soon after the uh, acquisition is set to take place. And again, you know, reach out to us if we can help you network or, or find that next one. One door closes, I'm convinced a, a more positive door is going to open for you. Um, but the question again, and we'll leave it up just a couple more seconds, has the acquisition plans already had an effect on your career? Even if that is you double thinking, am I in the right place right now? You know, maybe you've had at least one conversation or more about a place that you, you could uh, go to, or maybe it's had the opposite effect and, and you believe that you're going to be in a more focused Citrix or EUC organization at VMware either way and that you're doubling down and you believe it's the right place to stay to, to provide leadership and, and to continue to innovate at those organizations. They didn't become leaders for no reason, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, both of them, have, but between the, the two companies have definitely done amazing things. And I think to what we, I deviated from the formula a little bit ago, but like, that's where disruptors in the space like Leo Stream and WorkSpot and things like that and not the main huge companies that have had a steady direction for a long time and learn from the mistakes of the other two large uh, vendors are in a very good position, uh, in my opinion, with what's going on, the uncertainty along with maybe it's time for a change, you know, so I think it's cool. Well, there's there's I like the always answers. a disruptor on your team. <laughs> There's always going to be a disruptor back there waiting to take over if you have a misstep. And so when you have, again, you know, Citrix, I, I would love to see if you guys want to take exception to this, but it's clearly the leader in the EUC space, uh, just in terms of installed base, time in, in space and so forth. Uh, you know, VMware has done a great job uh over the last i don't know we'll call it eight years or so uh in terms of making inroads into that and getting a, a nice installed base as well uh so they were trying to be the disruptor uh but now that they're both sort of experiencing perceived perhaps maybe it's not real perceived disruption uh then then these disruptors like again uh that are again not not necessarily better or worse but just different offerings uh, is something that people need to be looking at. Uh, yeah. To, uh, you know, you brought and we brought up a couple of the, you know a couple of names who the disruptors could be. Um, AVD for sure. Microsoft all of a sudden can, is going to be is a, a disruptor, I believe. I, I, I would contend that AVD. You know, Microsoft again to the Citrix side of the EUC house specifically mm -hmm. has been on the heels of Citrix since Bill Gates in 19, I think it was 96, that he got up in front of a room full of people, a bunch of analysts and said, we're gonna build multi-user into the next version of NT. And, and Citrix stock crashed the next day. I happen to know, cause I owned a bunch. Thank you, Mr. Gates for making that worthless. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was about six months, it was, you know, it was down. And then everybody kind of realized, well, wait a minute, Citrix is kind of staying ahead of the Microsoft game. And that has been literally the Citrix story for, Oh, you know, mm -hmm. what has it been, 15, 20 years, uh, is, is how do you stay ahead of those innovations that Microsoft's doing? And it helps drive innovation for the overall market, right? Yeah. So they drive Citrix to innovate, they drive VMware to innovate, Leo Stream to innovate, WorkSpot to innovate. So Microsoft has been there. That's, that's, there's nothing yeah, new. There's no that. less than about three times that there was a threat there that Microsoft yeah. could yeah. have, you know, it was perceived that they could, it was two, twice in the 90s, I believe. And then, uh, and then again now, but there was a VDI in there too. Uh, there was a VDI in there somewhere around 2008 that Microsoft had and was going to revisit and made a, one or two small acquisitions. So I think we're on to the fourth time now with ABD. Do you think, do you think that the disruption fear for Citrix or VMware, do you think that they've overreacted too soon? That they've, that they're, 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 they're rotating or over rotating towards an acquisition or seeking an acquisition or an unsolicited acquisition has happened too soon that uh, that they still have plenty of runway given their given their innovation in the space. Do they have runway? Yes. Uh, do they have potential to innovate uh, around that? Yes. Um, but one of the things that the being a public company with a public stock price causes you to do is you think in terms of quarters and not years. And, and unfortunately, uh, that comes at the expense of innovation sometimes. 
and, and so as a result, you end up not being able to 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 spin do the long game. You can't do it's harder to do the long game. Let me rephrase that than it is uh, if you're a private company. Uh, so um, yeah, did they overreact too fast? Uh, I think the public markets were saying, hey, look, you're not growing at the rates you used to grow at. And so the valuation that you have here is is coming down, it's compressed, it's at this level. And, and so you need to do something to re unlock your shareholder value. What can you do to unlock shareholder value? Yep. You can spin things off, you can merge, you can be acquired. And, and so I think that's the path. Was that done too soon? I, you know, I, I, it's, it's done. So me second guessing whether it was done too soon isn't going to help change that. Uh, we, we just now need to see again: is this an opportunity to make changes in what you're doing in your environment uh, that it might take advantage of what's going on? Again, some, some of it might be advantageous to you. The acquisitions that are taking place because, like I said, now you can actually go back and reevaluate. Uh, am I doing the right thing? And you find out about new players. Uh, again, I apologize, you know, Karen, I I don't know a lot about Leo Stream, but after, you know, we were going to be on this panel, I started looking into the, the company and I like the, the concept of having a broker that allows me to build on multiple different platforms. Yeah. Um, within the past number of months, I've been doing some special projects, uh, looking into customer experience uh, for WorkSpot. And trying to understand uh, where they fall in, in things, and and they have a multi-cloud solution that's really nice. So they're competing against ABD. The downside to ABD is you're only going to get it on Azure, yeah, right? One. You got one cloud, and so you talk <laughs> about business continuity and design. How many people want to bet? Anybody here want to raise your hand that you want to bet your career on one cloud? No, I mean I lost no. on HD DVD, right? You know, and Blu-ray. <laughs> I thought Microsoft picking HD DVD was going to win. <laughs> I was wrong. Blu-ray for the win. Sony. Like well, I have Betamax. I have my Betamax, Betamax. tapes. You got your Betamax too. Okay, you're good there yeah. too. So, so my Still point is, my point is, AVD is there. It is competitive. Um, I, I remember all the way back to compact computers. You used to worry what Dell was doing every mm -hmm. day, and and uh, so to the point that it, it caused compact to be acquired by HP. Like they they gave up and they got acquired by HP. They gave in too soon because they were so worried about what Dell was doing that they changed their business model and then ended up having to get acquired. Yeah. And so did that cause the same thing here? Were people worried about AVD? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, Karen, we've got a question that came in. Okay. Um, can I use Leo Stream if I have if I currently have Citrix virtual desktops and I, I also was going to ask you before that came in, could you take us through um, a use case of maybe one of your recent customers? You don't, not naming names, but just, just get, uh, anonymize the industry a bit and, and kind of tell us how, how and why they chose Leo Stream. Sure. Which questions do I answer first? So uh, let's take the customer one. Yep. So I, I mentioned earlier that we don't actually see a lot of Citrix in the customer base that we have. And I think that tends to be because like Citrix has their defined workflow that they handle. A lot of it is kind of, I still call it terminal services because that's how old I am. But it's that multi-user kind of kind of setup. And that tends not to be the type of users that use LeoStream. We did integrate with Citrix for a while, LeoStream did. And it was complex and it was costly because you needed both full stacks and yep. it was just, it was not a good idea. So we pulled that out. But what we also see is a lot of people who have Citrix for EUC, if you pull back the covers, it's vSphere underneath a lot of times. And so what we can do is integrate directly with vSphere to manage VDI on vSphere. So you can take out Citrix and then insert Leo Stream as a VDI management platform that way um, we do also integrate with a number of other different types of hypervisors so there's a lot there's ways to do that um, but it is take out citrix insert leo stream for handling the provisioning and all of that sort of things when somebody comes to leo stream and, and we've been around since 2002 i know a lot of people have never heard of us before we're used to that but we have been around since 2002 we've been doing this for quite a while and what we have typically always been doing is running alongside of these other stacks and platforms, solving the problems that they can't. So back in the early days, it was a lot of Linux VDI. We did that 
way before VMware and Citrix were handling Linux. Um, now, a lot of it is remote access to Mac OS. We can do that, leveraging various different display protocols we integrate with, hosted workstations with high performance GPUs, all of these different types of platforms that you can integrate with that the other solutions couldn't do. So we've been running side by side. Now what we're seeing is, well, we're running side by side, but we can also integrate with the hypervisor level and the cloud levels that these other solutions do. So now what you can do is you can transition people off of those platforms and wrap them into the Leo stream environment and just kind of expand out the EUC environment that way. So a, a customer, um, could you t walk us through like what one of your customers who adopted Leo stream, how they did that lately in, in the use case? A lot over the last couple of years have been hybrid cloud type environments. So, you know, it, back in the day, it used to be a lot on-prem. Now it tends to be an on-prem component and a cloud component or all moving up into the cloud. So we integrate with, a lot of our work has been with AWS, particularly in the media and entertainment industry of late. But generally any industry that is you know graphic intensive workloads like the post-production engineers and creatives you get in m e or you know seismic engineers over in oil and gas industries it tends to be with leo stream what they're using us for is provide remote access to these power users to data and applications that are running in either hybrid environments or up in the cloud and then particularly when you're talking about the cloud they're leveraging the capability that we have to help them manage costs. You know, everyone go to the cloud and suddenly you're like, oh, that turned out to be a lot more expensive than I thought it was because I left everything running. AVD wants you to leave it running. Mm -hmm. um, but our thing is, no, we want to help you minimize those costs by automating you know, capacity and power state based on user demand. Interesting. Um, we, that, that poll, let's get back to the poll question. Thank you, Karen. Um, mm -hmm. That last poll question, you have the results, Kristen, for us? Sure do. Let's reiterate the question. Have the acquisition plans of Citrix and VMware already had an effect on your career or someone you know? We had 64% of the people vote and 27% said yes, 73% said no. A similar answer. Yes, 27%. Very similar. <laughs> yeah. Which one's at the that top, yes or no? Are they just clicking the first answer? Yeah. <laughs> Yes is at the top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so that, that that doesn't explain it either. That's interesting, mm -hmm. but that you know that's in line. There, there. It's it's safe to stay where you are. Um, it's safe to to keep what you know. It's safe to keep delivering those desktops if they're not broke. Don't fix them. Mm -hmm. So that 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 actually goes in line with what we have thought at Liquidware about the acquisitions that are pending is that we're not saying, you know, rip and replace what you've got. There's a lot of unknown things happening out there in the industry right now, and these are two of the things. So we believe that customers need to be prepared though. They need to be prepared to engage a, an expert consultant like Patrick or, 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 or look at uh, other options that are out there like LeoStream, like WorkSpot. They need to look and they need to be prepared to move their users when they feel comfortable doing so, when the answer is clear and prevalent out there. So we know there's a lot of unknowns out there currently. That that does reflect uh, what people are saying there, I do believe. Um, I, I, I would point out, again, the, for the folks that, that aren't uh, looking at stuff right now, burying your head in the sand is not a good plan. Like, I, I mean, even if you decide eventually you're going to stay with Citrix or stay with VMware, Great companies, great solutions, a lot of great folks. I know people in, in, in both organizations, love them both. Uh, but in the end, uh, you, know, you need to be looking at your user experience that you have today, determining whether or not it's where it should be. Like, go talk to your users, find out, make sure that the user experience is where it should be, by the way, I want to point out again, I'm a customer experience guy, right? So the user experience, let's make sure they're where, where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not, start looking at some of these other solutions and not for the technology sake, not just, hey, I want to have a different technology and I want to learn new skill set, but how do you make that user experience better? How do you drive it so that, because by the way, the happier you make your users, the happier they make your customers. 
or their customers, I should say. So, uh, so the point is, if if you want to increase business for for your organization and provide value to your organization, you should be looking at things on like how do I make the user experience better, which takes us all the way back to you should be looking right now. You should be looking at all the different be. options that are out there. You should be digging through, taking, attending webinars, uh, going through training classes. By the way, I would go through the training classes for all the major hyperscalers, uh, and and you can define major hyperscalers however you like. Uh, you know, it could be three, it could be five, depending on you know who you want to include inside of that. Uh, might even be more than that. Um, but but saying that I'm going to just stay with Citrix or I'm going to stay with VMware because that's what's installed, I I personally think that would be a mistake. Yeah, it's the the the, the Girl Scout adage: be prepared, right? What was that? <laughs> be prepared. That was what they always said. Yeah, that was it. That was a Girl Scout. <laughs> I, I had I have three girls. One of them was a brownie. Be prepared or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 what our message is and has been from Liquidware from day one. We're agnostic. You're not going to hear us say Citrix is better than VMware or it's AVD or that you should um, build your own solution. We don't. What we do is we look at and we say, what does the customer want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And we say, uh, what's your current user experience? And we can do that with our Stratosphere solution. And then we can say, you know, you want to decouple things to where users can move about at any time or you can have a hybrid workspace environment. You've got Profile Unity and then you never have to repackage the applications again. With flex app but it's having that flexibility is key going forward and being prepared and that's you know that's that's as commercial as i'll get today we do have one final poll question um that'll lead more discussion if you want to post that Kristen, it looks like we may end up going over just a few minutes today so if you can keep keep with us we'd, we'd love to keep this topic rolling just a little bit longer um so do you plan to make decisions by year in so we know that the citrix uh deal is pending and we know that at the end of the fiscal year, Broadcom, they're saying that's about the timing of when the VMware acquisition will be complete. So with that in mind, do you plan to make any changing or uh, any decisions that'll keep you and your organization agile um, by the end of the year because of the two things that are happening here, the two key things of Citrix and VMware acquisitions? Can I can I guess that the yes will be 27%? <laughs> yes. You can guess, but we we learned that yeah, we can guess, but I wouldn't bet. <laughs> this is an interesting one, and this could mean you know maybe I'm making a business decision that we need to start looking at independent solutions. Um, AVD right, is so kept a, let me make sure I I understand the question. Yep. Uh, so it might help others. So you're not saying hey I'm going to go throw out Citrus of more. You're saying are you making any decisions to to address the impact? Yes. Uh, so are you your... around other things and or are you swapping things out? Well, yeah. Okay. All right. That that's a good summary of what was intended here. ABD's yeah, I think a kept, lot of the uh, questions in... come up around refresh intervals, like mm -hmm. when when your subscriptions are coming up for renewals and when people are going to start thinking about it. Well, I, I know for me the big thing I've seen is uh is windows 11 and multi-user and you know microsoft office and app v going away and some of the stipulations there have really pushed people to go one way or the other and it's a push and pull i think but those are those are some big ones that keep happening um so that's what stands out to me well i think yeah and, and, and actually to your point about microsoft being a competitor you know to, to all these organizations or you know a frenemy to all these organizations uh when those renewals take place is when people are making decisions as well so it's not just whether it's a citrix renewal or vmware renewal it might be a microsoft you know enterprise license renewal that will usually be a catalyst of some sort for organization to look right right and we we do understand and, 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 and i can hear i can almost hear some people from citrix and VMware on the, VMware on the trying to pipe trying up and say, no, we work with AVD, we and we know that marketing message well, marketing. Is, is that AVD says they work with Citrix, they work with VMware, but yeah. to use your full entitlements and everything um, to, to run, you, you need to be AVD enabled in that area. What we're talking about is competitive, is native AVD. It's a, it's a term that uh, I feel like maybe I even helped coin early on. Native AVD means I'm rolling without Citrix or VMware. 
I'm going to go forward with their stack and, and I may roll in a few other vendors to help provide that seamless desktop experience. So are there bells and whistles missing in AVD? Yeah, I believe most people in the community would say, and that's where we brought up names like Nerdio. Liquidware provides a lot of things in there for the monitoring and, and application attachments and things like that as well. And, and there's other vendors that can help match that up. But we know that VMware and Citrix can both run alongside AVD enablements, but by then you're you're mostly running a VMware or Citrix stack. Well, and, and what happens is you get the, the customers questioning, why am I spending all this mm -hmm. money on Citrix or VMware? when I already have this entitlement uh, for AVD. So, so you, stacks I mean, there's on top a lot of stacks those. don't work particularly well. Right. right. Does that reflect I, what I'm you're seeing, Patrick? Like Go ahead. Patrick, does that reflect what you're seeing about AVD? The native AVD versus AVD? Because you sort of have to have that conversation with some customers too. Well, what do you really want to do? You say you want to go AVD, but what do you mean by that? And you have to clarify. You're on mute, Patrick. I think you're on mute, Patrick. Yeah, I, I know a couple purists that have d went down that road, and then that's where Nerdio and Liquidware and other solutions come mm -hmm. in to try to make it a more full-featured solution. Um, when I look at it as a security nerd, the differences are definitely big between all the vendors. Um, but when I look at it as usability, it's like that we always talk about this in IT and many things, minimum viable product. Is it there? Does it meet enough use cases for what you're doing? Um, and then that's where I see like Leo Stream and solutions like it coming in to be a disruptor in that space so that you have a, yet another option uh, before you go pure AVD. You can still run your desktops in Azure, AWS or GCP or wherever, your flavor of choice, but you know, that way you have that unified infrastructure and not just be on one cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one final question for the for the panel, and I didn't prompt them on this, and we'll see who wants to answer. Do you think that you can even answer, you know, Citrix or VMware? Do you think that these acquisitions are good for the EUC overall community? I'll go. I think I think they are. I think anytime you get the conversation going and people start looking outside of a box and and trying to build something better, then I think that's a good thing for the overall industry. And as Robert pointed out, new technologies and disruptors will come into market, and yeah, I think it leads to innovation. Yeah, I, I agree with Sarah. Like that's the exact answer that I was thinking in my head was yes, because it causes you to go out and look. Like, I yep. mean, so so was it good for that particular company? We'll find out. But but the fact that this is happening at these two large entities in this one space is causing a lot of folks to have to second guess and, and, and go out and look at their designs. I think that's a great thing. I do think it'll cause innovation. It causes everybody to be better, all these companies to be better. It causes, uh, it'll cause the EUC division of these companies to to refocus. If they're successful, they'll be successful. If they're not, they won't be, and the market will have more options all the way around because the acquisitions took place, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think having more than two big flavors of EUC ice cream is good for everybody, right? And so the more competition, the more innovation, uh, and I think everybody on this webinar is also learning about all these solutions to Robert's point and Karen's point. Like you got to know because there's a lot more out there than just these two companies plus Microsoft. Right. So mm -hmm. it's uh, you, you want to be you want to be knowledgeable to make those good decisions for your business, uh, because in most cases, whatever you're putting on VDI is usually the most important application that's business critical that's revenue impacting right that's why you're doing it you're not mm -hmm. just doing it for its fun right so All right uh at this at this time i want to bring Kristen back in Kristen, if there's any anything that's come in from the audience that we've missed I'd like to take a look um i don't believe so i believe it's been answered um, we did have a question coming in um, about what products should I be looking at, um, agreed looking at Windows. Um, I did receive another, no, Citrix costs a lot of money and we'll be looking at it for a return. Prices are going up. So just a few comments here. Oh, that's space. a good thing. Uh, we mm -hmm. understand that there's some, uh, we understand that there's a rush to try to get renewals in some cases. But I've also heard the opposite 
from VMware and Citrix that they're delaying renewals. Does, does any, anyone on the panel have any thoughts on that or have you heard that? Not. I, yeah, I happen to, <laughs> I've been talking to some folks with both organizations, again, sort of general conversations, but it sounds like, you know, y'all were talking about renewals do third, fourth quarter for Citrix as an example. Uh, and again, by the way, this applies to both VMware and Citrix uh, conversations I've had is uh, they are rushing to close customers on their renewals. And so are, you know, are, are trying to get those renewals accelerated. Uh, and customers uh, in some cases are actually doing that themselves, going to the sales reps and saying, I know I don't need to renewal till, you know, second half of next year, I'd like to renew right now because they just want to lock in for a period of time, whether that's one year, two years, three years, whatever that renewal contract looks like, they want to lock that in and give themselves more time. So, so it's kind of interesting that it seems to be where we're, folks are seeing a kind of a spike up in renewals that you might expect them to be like, hey, no, no, we want to wait to find out what's going on. It's the opposite. They're saying, yeah. let's get the deal, lock it in, and we'll figure yeah. it out afterward. That, that's it was. Yeah, and I mean, I think all of us in the in this industry too also know about everybody wanting to pull things in a quarter. So sometimes it literally can be your worst luck is that you bought something that is at the edge of a quarter, and so every single year someone's going to be like, "Hey, can you pull that in? Can you can you pay that in September instead of October? Can you pay that in June instead of May? You know, like and all this stuff." So depending on when you bought stuff, sometimes you're just unlucky, and you will <laughs> you're going to always get drug into the mud every year. But I think Robert's point is everybody's looking for stability when we have such inflation of all the things no one wants to get caught in that and we know that it budgets are so fixed we budgeted this this is all the money we have let's go ahead and pay the bill now so that we know that if whatever happens with acquisitions and reorgs or whatever it's we're good for a year at least great thoughts and i think the analyst uh, community had thoughts on that as well if you subscribe to any of them i think some, it's been well written about what what you should do if you've got pending renewals coming up, but I believe these thoughts reflected those as well. Kristen, uh, you want to close us out a little bit? Yes, we do have, uh, just let me reiterate the final poll. Do, do you plan to make decisions by year end to minimize the impact mm -hmm. that Citrix and or VMware acquisitions will have on your org? 55% of the group voted, 53% uh, said yes, 47% said no. So we did have a different outcome this time. That's cool. Oh, yeah, so that close. Just at this point. Yeah, right. We and also, that a spike. Okay. <laughs> um, we have. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. 50 50 nearly. I mean, very close, very close. And 55% and of the people voted. Um, we also want to mention too, we had a fall, we have a fall festival kit that we are raffling off, and we have uh, the winner has been chosen for that. Um, our winner is Dave Mims of GameStop. Um, Dave will be reaching out to you for the Fall Festival kit, uh, which is a backpack cooler and uh, a liquid wear blanket, some other fun items in there. So hopefully you'll be able to- No pumpkin spice. That. Right, maybe some pumpkin spice yeah. lattes in there. <laughs> so, um, Jason, do you want to close us out then? I do. I'd like to thank Karen, Patrick, Robert. Kristen, uh, all of you for helping put together this panel. It was a very interesting one. I think we had a we had it's a great interest out of this one, and uh, we'd love to have any of you back on a future panel at a different time. And uh, we'll see how these things go. It's, uh, interesting times to be in the industry, indeed. We'll all be looking back at this and and saying whether or not our thoughts were right or wrong in a, a few years. But uh, in all likelihood, we have advised everyone to be prepared and uh, whether or not they're a Girl Scout, right? Yep. Okay, well, this will close out this session of Liquid Wear Unplugged, and uh, I'd like to thank all of you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you perhaps in person, and I hope some sometime soon. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Thanks all, bye.